Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Unfolding the Soul. Today, my guest is Femina Ludens. She's um, chosen to talk about uh, community and her, her journey through different communities. Um, so yeah, let's let's start it off with what what is a community? A community is people. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> um, you know, a community is a center uh, for people to just communicate life with each other, shared experiences, share be in experiences to together. I think that's the the best way I would describe community. Okay, uh, so so. They're they're coming together to mm -hmm. to to share in life. Like like, um, are, are there specific forms that that you would uh, pick out? Like like is is this like gathering around the fire, right? Like in in the tribe. Yeah, like that would be like the first sort of like what I see, like a either like a very intimate setting, like in your home or like the city center, like the church and old uh, villages and things like that. Just, yeah, like it, it's the fire that brings everybody together. That's the people around it gathering by the fire. That That's what I would, yeah, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, and, and, and I, I, I like how you make the distinction between home and, and city center because like, to commune around the city center would have different purpose than communing in home. So can you go a little bit in that? Yeah. Cause I mean, you know, I think there's just, there's always going to be different levels of vulnerability and intimacy that you give to others. You know, like I believe that just in a community, we should all help one another, serve one another and have mercy on one another. But that doesn't mean that I tell just anybody all the details of my life or my struggles, you know? So it's like, there's a distinction of levels of how people get to know you. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's, it's facilitating emotional struggle, but in, in some sense also, I guess, a material struggle, um, like the sharing of, of, of resources, uh, the sharing of information, um yeah sharing of attention um, yeah. and sharing a struggle because like in a community you're gonna have all every community has something that's sort of quote wrong with it or has a problem so you guys share in that as mm -hmm. well okay so what 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 does that mean uh, to you that that you're a part of a community it means that i i give my time and my talents to help build it and i know that in in my past i've kind of man, manufactured talents i guess you could say like to to feel like i uh like sometimes you get a pressure, whether it's by your family or like kind of messages that you get in society to be just another person in like this straight, like linear line of life. Right. And that can diminish someone's, someone's natural talent that they just need to mature and form. So I know that I've I've done that, but I I really think that every person has something in which they can contribute, and that is how you participate in community. Like that's 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 where I see my place in the community is. Oh, I see that there's this, and I know that something like that. Like I get excited for it, or I have like the spunk for it, and so I will kind of place myself there while also, you know, being available to like learn other things that maybe I'm not uh, so skilled at or, or good at, you know? Mm -hmm. So in, in some sense, you, you, you're talking about that the community has expectations or, or you perceive expectations of the community. And then 
you stretch yourself into that and, and that can be oppressive but but it's also you can stretch the community into what you have to offer right where mm -hmm. you can apply you, your your value but you can also find yourself in your application yeah exactly like you're you're the missing piece to that puzzle that maybe some people don't realize is missing Sometimes when you're in a problem or like if you live a certain way, you have so many blind spots because you've just gotten so comfortable with living in there, with living in that problem that when someone comes in and like kind of inserts themselves and kind of lifts that pressure off of you or that oppression off of you, you're like, oh, wow, I didn't know that I needed that. Um, and I think all too many times we think that we have to conform with perceived messages of things. And I'm going to sneeze right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> or not i don't know it like died down <laughs> so yeah i i i like this right so when when i hear a puzzle piece right i i i hear fitting in right mm -hmm. i i hear uh home i i, I hear purpose i i, I hear meaning mm -hmm. right and then then the other side is is someone fits on you right like like yeah they, they're 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 cooperating with you and making you realize uh, something about your participation that that was hidden to you so yeah the the, the sharing is actually uh, facilitating in 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 some sense growth um mm -hmm. and and also the recognition of of value right because like there's uh, a sense of gratitude that's connected to that as well right is uh, oh, yeah. you, you just did that for me um so yeah that okay that that's uh and even if it you uh, know even if that gratitude isn't immediate because you know some people can be a little curmudgeon -y over some years like maybe it takes some time to settle in to have that gratitude and you have to like see the effects and have the fog lifted it's not always immediate so it's, it's on the part of the participants like you have to have some level of patience for other people not seeing the benefit of that you know because change can be difficult i think that um i think that when you if you kind of stick out from a, if if your participation sort of sticks out compared to other people because it's like your talent, then it may be a little startling for other people, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. So um, it's just different. So what, what's implicit in there is, is that because the change is difficult and, and takes time, like there's also a, a component of commitment uh, mm -hmm. to the to the community um yeah maybe you want to go into that a little bit yeah it's just, it there is a commitment because it it, it i feel like uh like i believe that there's different like there is uh, the best way i can illustrate is like there is a sort of there is a marriage of sorts or almost what you would mm -hmm. call a marriage that happens between you and a community. And I think it's kind of like, uh, you know, talking about Christ being, you know, the bridegroom and the church being the bride. Um, there is like this sort of, uh, there, there's a marriage that happens and in that you have to have a commitment and a fidelity to continue on regardless of, of some of the things that may come up. I mean, for some people, I mean, other people, it may be like difficult and they may need to, you know, maybe they might feel like they need to seek a community, but um, that's a different topic. <laughs> so <laughs> finding a different community. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, that, that that is hard, right? So I think I think the word fidelity that stood out to me, because um, well, yeah, marriage is binding, right? And and fidelity means uh, living up to to your bond in some sense, right? Mm -hmm. um and i think i think a lot of people uh struggle with that like um 
like it's yeah that's not uh, in fashion uh, nowadays uh so can you, can you tell a little bit about how how that works for you well i will uh, i will be completely transparent like i am not like i see both sides of it because of just uh like decisions that i've made in my life that are you know like currently affecting me that so i understand that I don't fully live that out because, well, I'll just say it. Like I'm, I'm going through a divorce right now. So I know that, like, I acknowledge that that is really how marriage or a community is supposed to live itself out. But then there is the human struggle that you have that you don't know if you can continue on to endure that. So it's, it's a, it's, it's not a, like, I think, a, like you were saying, a lot of people do struggle with that because some, for a number of reasons, as I won't even say that there's like one reason. Um, well, it's and, hard, and, right? It's giving yeah. over, right? It's surrendering to your authority to to the community, right? Like that's yeah. that's not not a small thing. Yeah, and and there's trust issues, right? Like because. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you if you go into a community, like how do you know whether you should do that, right? Like yeah. there's cults, there's 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 many places where, yeah, you, you don't want to put your nest. Yeah, and I guess, and I I think also like when you're born, because we're all born into a community of sorts, whether it's whether it's a dysfunctional connection and where that dysfunction comes from, who knows, um, but like there is a certain level there we're all born into a community so then some in some sense we have for some time no choice on whether or not we want to be a part of that community and then and so some people decide to stay in that and work within that framework and and i think that i think that being taught to endure that kind of makes kind of strengthens a person's armor to mm, to not go on the whims of like your feelings of being dragged down if that makes sense mm -hmm. like that's, yeah, that's... You, you, you were talking about a bunch of things right like uh <laughs> being a puzzle piece, right? Like fitting in mm -hmm. gratitude, patience, right? Like, like in some sense, those are necessary, uh, personality, uh, qualities that you, you are required of you to be in a community. And if, if you're missing out on, on them in, in a fundamental way, it, it's going to be hard for you, right? Like you're, you're, yeah. you're gonna, and in, into, in, into some, some conflicts. So I, I think, there's a lot of people, right, like that can't even imagine themselves being a part of a community because they, they, they don't have these qualities, right? They don't have the skills mm -hmm. required uh, for, for participation. Um, yeah, maybe and I admit not. I'm one of those people <laughs> or I have been one of those people, I should say, you know, I've 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 really settled into my own community or I should say, well, I feel because I live in a city, it's not just within like my grid, like it's a wider thing, but it's like, that's where I function in the wider thing is within my grid. If you, know, cause even though where I place my time in are sort of their separations, right? Like for instance, um, I participate in schools, like I participate in Catholic schools, but I am no longer a Catholic, but that is within a big wider community. So, but uh, the people that I meet or that I commune with go out into the wild, wider community. It's like, you know, just so many broader things. So um, rather than focusing on like the macro, I just am in, in the micro. And at first, like I thought, oh, I'm like spread and four different areas of my life here going into these different communities before I realized that, well, no, those aren't, those are just parts. They're not distinct. They're, they're not dis distinct. Like if one fails, 
that is going to burden the other parts of the broader community. Like if, if one of the schools, for instance, closed down, that's going to op like those kids, those families have to go somewhere. So it's like, you're always going to have like that other uh, level of effect that goes out. Am, am I? Yeah, you're, 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 there's, a, there's a web of relations and um, everything gets holed up by all the pieces being there. And if you change the, the playing board, right, then mm -hmm. yeah, there, there might be, well, either tension or a release of tension, right? Like sometimes that's actually a good thing if, if a puzzle piece falls falls away because there was too much pressure somewhere, right? Um, so so you you kind of see that as as your justification for split up, like because because it's all necessary in some way, then it it's less important where you spent your energy as long as it's doing something good or mm, I think it I think it's important where because sometimes sometimes like the foundation you you don't have the same foundations for things so for me the schools that uh, my children go to um the church that I go to we have a shared foundation we have a shared idea of how we want things to go. Um, I don't think that I could, I, I, I would find it a difficult, I would find it a difficult task to go into other sorts of schools that don't have that, you know, like public schools, like, you know, we go, they go to private schools. I like that is so important to me because it's such a smaller community for them to like do bite sides of. And, and, uh, those families all, um, have a shared faith, right. Whether or not they participate in it is like a different topic and a different subject, but at least at the very least they all come there and they know, like, there's just something, there's just something. This is why we put them in a, in this private school, religious school. Right. Whereas going to a public school, that would be so many different things that it causes so much con that would cause confusion for them more than me at this point. But mm -hmm. because of that, I don't, yeah. So sorry, going back to the point, like I think it's important on where you give your time, but I guess the best way to say, say it is it's important where you give your time, but, um, Wow, I lost my thought. It's important where you give your time, but it shouldn't be an echo chamber. There we go. Like echo, like you shouldn't purposely place yourself in a in in somewhere that's so comfortable that it's just an echo chamber and it doesn't grow. Cause sometimes it, it gets stagnant, you know, if you're in an echo chamber, if that makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I get it. So, so like what I hear you say is it's important that the community is organized around a purpose and, and that you share that mm -hmm. and, and then public schools effectively, uh, the purpose is get, getting educated, right? Uh, but that can and, be so many different things, right? You know, like yeah. educated in what exactly, right. um, and, or how exactly, um, so it's, 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 there's a faultiness to that foundation on that goes into, well, then how do we get there? What books do we get? All of these things that doesn't really form a community, you know, it doesn't really form, form a bond because there's nothing that's like a, it like, counts, a, a, right? like it's not yeah. an option. <laughs> like yeah. is it, the bond has, has to originate somewhere else, right? It yeah. Originate because, yeah. yeah, because it's like, they'll, they're all getting an education, but like, for instance, if, if, like I know that you like here, like you have to be associated with a form of education or school somehow, right? So we here in California, we have homeschooling, but you have to be attached to like 
you know, a satellite school or you create your own school. Um, and then there's also schools themselves that are private, public and all of that. But the one thing that you have to have is your child registered to, to be it. So you can't just like say, well, you can't opt out from a school setting of some sort. You have to, so you can't just say, Oh, I'm not going to like enroll them in any school at all, even like a homeschool. And they're just going to like work in, in my shop. Right. Like you can't do that. But back in the way back in, in the other days, people would have to know like, oh, OK, like we push we we set aside going to like the, the school because it's harvest season. You know, there is a shared knowledge, a shared understanding like we need to reap everything that we sowed right now, like on those fields. So this is not as important as that. Whereas like education, it's very self, like it, uh, even having the foundation of education can be very self-serving because what is other than knowledge, which I, I think everybody should have an education of some sort, but what is the shared knowledge going toward ultimately with the way that it's like, in place is for us to get degrees and like somehow it's under the guise of changing the world but it comes into a well what do i do i have to like choose like i have all these choices and then sometimes you realize that you don't have a choice because like you want to do one thing but it's so competitive that like you can't do that thing so you have to do another does that make like it's a is, is that also a thing that community helps with making that choice it should, but I think that in a lot of ways it doesn't anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't think a lot of us are given really very, very much context of the choices that we do have. Whereas it used to be, whereas community used to tell you like, hey, you were born into a blacksmith family. You're just, you're going to be a blacksmith. Like this is a part of our, our community and your family has been doing it for so long, that's what you're going to do. And it was like what you did for your dying days and your sons would do it. So so I, I go back to the idea of a puzzle piece. Sorry. Right? <laughs> so so when, when, when you're a blacksmith son or whatever, right? Like it's it's obvious what the puzzle piece is and where it fits and, and like maybe there's two or three other places where if you if you do some effort you also fit in but there's there's uh it there's a clarity in wh where where you would be valued well if you look at for well, the big city right and and the places where you could fit and and yeah you don't you don't even you don't even have a taste of 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 what what the place is where you're gonna fit even even if you've decided where you want to go right like because you yeah don't... like an example in my life is so i i said like i'm gonna go to london and i'm gonna go to fashion school like i in some way knew that i loved art and design now I thought, oh, I'm going to do fashion. I just like, that's where I'm going to go. So I got accepted into a school in London and I went there for fashion school and I ended up dropping out of it because it just it, like, I still loved art and design, but I found like it wasn't my thing and it wasn't where I fit in into that big general world. Because design can be a lot of things. It could be graphic design, textiles. Um, you could design cars. Uh, like all of these things. Like where do you exactly fit in like that so broad of category of like art and design? And down the line, um, you know, like I, I had a bunch of things that went on. Like kind of going here and there and then getting married, having kids. And I started to go back to college again. I said, I'm going to do interior design. I love interior design. And there was something about it that really did light me up. And when I started taking certain courses that also went into construction, I started, I suddenly felt a um, connection to my family who's deeply into construction. That's what mm -hmm. my, my paternal side has done for decades, right? And like since my great great 
grandfather and probably even before him. Uh, it's just like in their blood. And that started, that was like, I think my first connection to like the community I was born into, um, where it's just like, oh, like there's like a connection. It's not just me. Right. So then I decided to get an art history degree because my instructor said nobody should get an interior interior design degree because like there's so many things that you can do with it. Like there's so many things that you can't do with that designation. But if you do something specific, that will be your specialization in this broader world of interior design. Because at that point, everybody had thought HGTV, home flipping, everything. I want to do something more. There's so many historical buildings to, you know, like maintain and uphold. And I love that aspect. And that also was a component of my family, you know, of just being a part of it. And over time, I found exactly kind of where I, I, I fit in to that. But that started to be more of a, hey, dad, tell me about like what you do. And mm -hmm. what is that? Like reconnecting that in which I found the puzzle piece there. Yeah. So if, if I rephrase that, so there's, there's this big space, right? That's connected to your, your study. And some people would perceive that as freedom, right? It's like, oh, I yeah. can do everything I want, but, but you more had a problem was like, it, it doesn't connect like this. Like, yeah. And, and then you go back to the family and, and, and to history and that allows you to give it a place. And that also gives you then a way to, to participate in your role or, or, mm -hmm. or even imagine. Yeah. Maybe that like, could you envision yourself in, in the future? In, in the beginning, like, was, was that a, is something that you were able to do? No, I actually never, I'll be honest. I never really gave a lot of thought to any of these things. Um, I was given so much freedom that I think a lot of people only dream of, but in a certain sense, some, some sorts of freedoms can be very restrictive because the possibilities are endless, so to speak. And you get choice anxiety. And if it's not given to you, like if my parents were to have said, you are going to do the family business, maybe there would have been that resistance and that rebellion. Because I think a lot of people that do end up doing that, like going down that road of following in their parents' footsteps, do dream of doing something different. But like, I could say from being on the opposite end where you're, you know that you have, there's something established in your family that you could be a part of just straight out the gate, but your family doesn't want to repress you. So they let you do whatever you get. So I, I believe that you get so lost in the choices that there's no direction in which can navigate help you navigate through where you fit in the community. It's, it's overwhelming. And sometimes it just puts you in a place of like depression because you don't know what the meaning of your life is. You know, even, even with my faith, like, even though I have like what guides me in my life, that doesn't, that does not, that does not tell me where I need to be in my community like in the end i still have to like search for that and you gotta find, find your calling right yeah like yeah. it's still in the end the onus is on me to find out where and how i participate in the way that i'm supposed to participate mm -hmm. i i've i've actually been struggling with uh sight and ears to hear and eyes to see right oh yeah i and i need to and, and there's, well, there, like for me, it's obvious what it means to have eye to, eyes to see, right? But ears to hear, like it, it has a different quality, right? And I just mentioned calling, right? So mm -hmm. if you have ears to hear, you hear your calling. Yeah. 
Yes. So, yes. And I, it's so funny that you say that because like, that is, that is like the season of life that I'm like in for like in my faith journey in the, in this, in this topic, because, um, I've been going to an Orthodox church for, uh, at first on and off for like four, four or five years. Um, and it's really been on for the last like two years, right. Where it's like consistent participation going apart. I can kind of name names. Um, and, and like, it's, it's funny, but the thing is I, in my defense, the Greeks give everyone the same name. So I have to learn which one is which, like they all have like, it's like five names and I have to remember which of those five names, like. Well, you could you could say in. that's easier, right? Like, you have only well, five yeah, books. but then at the same time, there's so many nicknames that come from that, and people can say like, "There's one." Well, there's one gentleman, right? Someone called him Dino for it, like, mm -hmm. and I was just like, "Who?" Like, that's not 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 that woman's wife uh, husband, right? Like, because th that doesn't sound like him. No, it. This is his wife, and I'm like wait, his name is this. Like I hear this all the time. And that's what I'm talking about. It's like they, they have a lot of, a lot of the names have like five different nicknames. So mm -hmm. then it's like remembering, but anyway, um, the point <laughs> that wasn't the point that was, a, but, um, but I've been going there and see, the thing is, is that one can find it boring because it's the same thing over and over and over again like you can go you can go one year before and one year ahead and on that particular sunday of that year you will hear the same exact epistle and gospel reading like you will hear the same exact thing right and some people could say oh i've heard it before but my ears to hear have really come from going there and i start hearing things like different ways that things are said the message is the same but it's like ah oh i get it kind of i think yeah got so I'm, some I'm, of it at least <laughs> yeah i got some of it it's like a new level of understanding and it's so freeing it's it's so freeing because then i understand even more how how I should conduct myself in community, you mm -hmm. know, on the fidelity of staying in this community, regardless of, of some of these things that are like so minor, because sometimes people, we can, I know that with the sense of freedom that I've lived with, that you can have choices on like, oh, this person says this, like, I don't want to talk to them anymore or whatever. And then when you look back, you when you if you were to like be on the outside looking in, you're like, that's such a mi minimal reason for not wanting to commune with this person. Now I, with the ears to hear, like in the eyes to see, like I see like the level of like, of love that you give to another person by mm -hmm. sticking it out, like in that participation in the community, rather than going on the whims of your desires or whatever. Yeah, well, th that that is a, that is a hard uh, a hard thing to discern, right? Because like we we actually in church had had this whole thing about that made the people that drag us down right in mm -hmm. and, and prevent us from getting to our calling like yeah. let them leave our lives right so there, yeah. there is there is there is a way in which you can obsess about something but on the other hand right like if you obsess about it then they're dragging you down right like it's yeah it's distracting you from doing something good so that's yeah that's difficult right and yeah and, it is and... it is because like you like in the beginning when you were talking about like you can find yourself in a cult. Like that is a negative of like, that is a negative of, of putting yourself in a community because it may not be, it may be a community that's not going for the greater good or influence you in a bad way. So it's, it is, it is difficult because sometimes there are people that like make it difficult to 
be with in that sense, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah. I get it. I agree. So let's, let's start in in your journey of life like what what is the first time that you became aware that you were part of a community surprisingly it it took for me to start going to my church for me to understand and accept community Because before it was very much on the whims of, oh, this person hurt me in this way. So now I, I just, no, I'm not going to talk to them anymore. And although there are. Hold on. So, so when, when you say that, is, does that mean that you're blind to the communal dimension of the relationship? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. That's actually a really good way to frame it. Like, Yeah, I, I was, see. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a really good way to frame it because um because I I viewed myself like an island like we're all little tiny islands that like you know are in a certain geographic region you know like I'm this island this is the island of Manuel and you know like we, we could see each other wave hi you know maybe row the boat to the next hey, individual hi. how are you doing <laughs> hi how's it going maybe take our little catamaran and go over to their island but like ah i want to go to back to my island okay go all the way back uh or go far away go to that person's island and then like uh, no then come back like that's that's how i used to think um we were as individuals now my Well, I I want to I want to keep there a little bit. Yeah. So, so then, so then, I was so blind to the fact that we are like to the to the fact that it's more like I was so blind to the fact that we are actually more like houses right next to each other, not an island. We're like houses right next to each other. Like so, you're my neighbor neighbor. Like I go out to my front lawn and I see and I'm like, hey Manuel. As opposed to like, there's a body of water that separates us, and I was so blind to to that fact, you know. I so so what does that what does that do to you? Like like how how does community look from the fact that that you're effectively an atom? Uh... Well, it means that you can make decisions that best best serve you purely, mm -hmm. and so it's more it's it, you are more prone, I believe to hurt other people not because like maybe they're too sensitive or something like that but like you only see them as a means to an end like their their place in your life is only to serve you and you discard them when they no longer serve you i think that's what that individual mindset that island mindset leads to Because I see it in the actions that I had before I started, you know, really diving deep into my faith and then having my eyes to see like, oh, wait, no, like this person like lives right next to me. Like I have to serve them just like they're, they may serve me even with their difficulties. They serve me, you know, because I learned patience to sit and listen to someone else rather than talk. As you know, I'm a very loquacious person. So um, it's it I could keep talking um about myself and my ideas and all of this stuff. Knowing that you have a neighbor means that like you stop and you listen to their problems, you listen to their thoughts and ideas. And sometimes you participate in the things that they like that maybe don't even interest you. Like I'm not a big sports uh, like I I used to love going to sporting events, but that was only really because I was looking at it from a oh I look cool sort of way. Now I actually like I'm not really I know that I'm not really much of a sports person. Um, but I go to sporting events, I participate in sporting events because other people in my life love doing that and I want to be there with them. Because that mm -hmm. is an interest of theirs. Whereas before doing stuff was only like a trend to be cool, to fit in like, you know, around a round peg in a square hole. 
Very good. So, or a square peg in a round hole. Going back to the individualist thing, so do you, do you think you always have that, or is that an attitude that you developed? I think it's an attitude. I. Uh, that's a good question. That's like a. Uh, that's like a chicken and egg thing, because I do. I think if, I think I developed it. Going okay. along so, with it. so 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 because because this this is where it gets interesting, right? So because the the way the way I imagine it is you're you're in school, right? For example, mm -hmm. and you know that school is a community in some way, right? Like yeah, like you you just know, but then you don't really know what it means, right? <laughs> it's like yeah, and and so yeah, maybe you you could you could figure out like what tilted you to go the individualist route like i would say watching my parents i'm an only child so i was around my parents a lot and if some things like they didn't like they wouldn't do it at all you know um and I mean, like, and I don't, and I'm not saying that as a, oh, my parents made me the way that I am. Like, they, they are very kind people and, you know, they are very helpful people, but they also do things that are like the very individualistic mindset. You know, you can't tell me what to do, which in and of itself is uh, there's a, a certain sense of being right in that like you can't force someone to do something you can only lead a horse to water you can't make it drink um but it's like a an avoidance of responsibility mm -hmm. uh, or yeah i can't like that but i think also just uh selection of responsibility in a way well, yeah that's but like, that, that that's like only yeah. the flavors i like right <laughs> yeah yeah like that, yes yes only the flavors that i like so then um i know that i oh like and mind you, there's a lot of things about them that happened in their life that made them the way that they, they are. So it's like not really just like, oh, I had bad parents. No, I had great parents. It's it's just that's what I grew up in. And so then for me, because I never like said anything or asked questions because I didn't know what questions to ask uh, exactly. But I've always I see that I've always had this sort of shame for being i've always been a person that has been prone to oh i see a, a like a, a injured puppy on the street let me just like bring it home sort of mm -hmm. thing but sometimes like that that puppy was like born on in the wild and so it'll bite you and it may have rabies <laughs> so mm -hmm. you know it's like a caught it's like a lack of discernment on when to help someone because sometimes you can be someone that wants to help people, but you end up helping a lot more people than you understand, than you have or the capability yeah. of. And so I know that my parents always tried to guard me from that because they've they've always seen that in me because that's like if there's one thing that I can that I could say that they've tell, told me time and time again, it's like don't take on other people don't make other people your projects don't do you know and and so there's always that too so that anyway i'm sorry there's so many things to unpack with that that question yeah, yeah, yeah I, 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 think it's, I think it's interesting because you you uh created a team for me right it's like uh i i don't know what questions to ask right and then you go into this this lack of discernment so would you be able to articulate a question that you should have asked? I should have asked. I should have asked, how could I help this person if they can be helped? Like mm -hmm. a, a how, because as a, as a young person, as a child, um, you only have the ways to help people that you've been like, 
told. So like, for instance, and sometimes the, the telling of those things is not the whole story. So uh, sharing, let's, let's go with sharing. You're taught you need to share your things. Well, to what extent? Because sometimes we say you have to share, but then we get the directive. You don't share everything. Well, then how do I know what things to share and not to share? Like, so had I just asked the first question, I should have, I could have gotten something to lead to a, oh, okay. So then if that's not the way that I do that, then, you know, how so, can I, you know? Yeah. So I, I, I get th this idea that you're, you're back into this combinatorially explosive option space, right? Like you seem to mm -hmm. be walking into, in, into that a lot uh, in, in different areas, right? Mm -hmm. um, so when you say I should have asked that question, is that a question you should have asked yourself or you should have asked your parents? Like, what would this, like, how do you see that working? Like, that's actually, I really actually don't 100% know only because, um, you know, sometimes it, I guess as a parent, you kind of just start thinking of the things that you should teach and then how to teach it and all of these things. And so it's not really like a blame game of, well, my parents should have done this right. Or they should have taught it this way. Um, so, but at the same time as a parent, like, yeah, there's some things that you should teach, but then there is the not fear of just asking things the way that they come to you at the time. I know that what I just said on what I should have asked is what I would, how I would ask it now. But like, as a child, that may not have been the way that I did, you know? Well, and so it's in like, in other words, would you have had ears to hear the answer? I think in a in a certain sense, yes, but it would have been like a like a a dummy version. <laughs> yeah, like a dummy version. Like it, we're, we all know things in the time, like in in the time to our maturity level, you mm -hmm. know. So I think that that my parents, had I asked, they would have answered it in a way that a child could understand, mm -hmm. right? Um, whereas now we Maybe. actually have discussions no because i think there's like there's there's a there's definitely a different way that you talk to kids than you do with adults with adults there's like more of a conversation with kids like you have to like you give them answers but like you don't talk to them the same way that you talk to an adult entirely not not withholding information but just the way that you communicate that information if that makes sense like yeah, i'll yeah. talk so to my kids about these things but like it'll be a very like still a broad quest like communication of it because right, they, they, it. They, you got to plant the seed right and then they yeah have, they have to nurture it but um i'm i'm imagining right like you you were talking about the, the community in some sense asking you to think for others right so, so you you have to disqualify this this atomized thing right and then mm -hmm. in some sense you 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 got to pursue the interest of the other um and i guess i guess my question is like do, do you think your parents had that capacity right because because the well, I know from personal experience, right? Like, like if you don't have eyes to see, you can also not communicate that to your children, right? Like, yeah, if, yeah. Even if they have have. So, so do you think do you think that's like a family curse, or? Hmm. Wow. <laughs> that's a family curse i can't, can't confirm <laughs> look at what you did you made me sneeze <laughs> i i am i am a wizard <laughs> um maybe maybe not 
that's it's a really good question because it's like um in some senses I have the confidence that they would have at the time. Um because they're they're kind of different now in a certain sense that I kind of wonder who they were then and whether or not they would answer that. Does that make sense? Like they've, mm -hmm. they've had things happen, more things happen in their life as you do when you wake up in a new day <laughs> um, in which have made them different people in a way. But at the same time, I see bits of exactly how I remember them that. Well, the seats were always there, right? Yeah, that you know, I I do have I do have a confidence that they would have only because we as a family and an extended family are very tight knit. Mm -hmm. And the matriarch, my grandmother, she very much is someone that taught her sons to be the you know, general term, good people. And thus then when they weren't doing something good would tell them and they learned over time. So I think that they've always that, that because especially my dad had that, he would have had an answer of some sort. Um, but maybe not embodied, but propositional or something. Yeah, like it just would have been. I know, I know it wouldn't have been necessarily within my my exact framework of where I am now, right? Mm -hmm. But it would have yeah, been yeah. something with with a with. It would have been something that was true and more, had more wisdom. Nothing. I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> more than nothing. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And and yeah, that's in some sense all we can ask for. Right? <laughs> yeah, and I really, that's all. I mean, anybody that I have so much love for my parents now that I'm a parent. And I think in a lot of ways, sometimes that becomes that um, because of the fact that it's just like um, you can't you can't always plan that you'll have the right way to answer that question when that comes. Mm -hmm. And so you do the best that you can. You just you just do the best that you can. And they did. So I think I think that they would have. I was lucky. I was lucky that even though, like, I was lucky because, like, like I said, no matter what I'm saying now, I think very highly of my parents. You know, mm -hmm. they 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 taught me a lot and they gave me a lot of good foundations. And in a lot of ways, when I think back on it, um, I'm just like, wow, I should have just taken their advice because, like, <laughs> that's not the way that I would have said that advice or given that advice. Or, and that's not the framework that I would have had for that advice. But, like, that is basically on the track of the advice that i give mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. yeah that well there's 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 something in the way that the advice is given that allows you to accept it right like yeah that's part of giving the advice is, is, yeah. is make, making it bite-sized chunks that, that yeah. can be digested yeah and, uh, and you have to just know where the person's at in their life too you know there are right. lots of things that they said before their time <laughs> Right, 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 and, and I, I like that, like I think that's the hard part, right? Like, when do you do what and how much, yeah. right? And, uh, exactly. So, so if we go back, little you, marking around in school, <laughs> and like now, can I drawing the circle on the mobile island, doing bumper cards with the islands, like? <laughs> How how did you how did you get there? Honestly, you make me as a little girl sound so much nicer than I really was for like a good chunk of it. Okay. I would, if we're using the the island analogy, I would raid other people's islands, like okay. AKA I was a, I was a bully at one point, like the school bully. So that would be like an island raider at that point, terrorist, island terrorist. <laughs> so I was not as nice as that is. Tell, tell me about that, right? So, 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 what what was the motivation for bullying? And like, what uh, was the thing that you're achieving with within the bully? General unhappiness and so that, that's just just 
like like a lightning rod you just zap everybody with lightning like yeah okay i i i was i've always uh, like i i was a i was a, there were things going on then you know like there are things going on that really like were affecting me. I was like so young to experience it. Mm -hmm. Nothing traumatic and nothing deeply. Well, like deeply traumatic, but um, yeah, that would explain. I would have to explain. So, so you, you didn't have a coping mechanism. Uh, yeah. Um, right. Yes. I didn't have a coping mechanism and nor did I have the uh, community vocabulary <laughs> to even say like, this was the emotion that I had until um, I was put into a program at school that was basically like a, a group therapy program and, um, and was given the vocabulary to express emotions, you know, mm. of maybe like feeling jealous of, of somebody or, um, feeling offended by things said. You know, mm -hmm. um, all I just knew was how to react or, you know, and I think a lot of it probably was like trying to have a sense of control because uh, control and like respect, which I will say that latter part is definitely something I still struggle with, but it just manifested itself differently to where I just like didn't realize that that was like a, a thing. So control. Okay. So first of all, do you think that if you were part of a community with, with your family, that the community would have given you these things that you got in therapy? Yeah, because it was part of my community. I mean, like at that time, the, the school that I went to, it was a small school. It was a brand new small school. So the resources that went into it were so brand new. So it was like, uh -huh. a yeah, so it was just mostly local kids. Um, nobody really commuted from other areas of the city to bring kids to the school. Now it's probably different, but then it was just brand new that I knew that the kids that I was like walking home from school with were the kids that were living in my apartment building. Mm -hmm. So, and, and so things like uh, control and respect, I, I assume that you mean control in the social realm. Yeah, yes, yes. So 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 you you are relating to a communal dimension there, right? But like in in a in, in a bad way, right? Like it's yeah. It's in a like as the in <laughs> like, a, yeah, as the piece in that community, I was overstepping by you know, trying to control a sense of respect from right. other people secure yeah. your position secure. <laughs> yeah secure my position or have a feeling of security of some sort mm -hmm. you know security is either given to you or like you like make security for yourself sort of deal i think right yeah yeah the power, right? yeah yeah and just like the the under the uh respect part it goes into that too because like respect of like wanting to be understood and like people like acknowledge me and things like that like yeah mm -hmm. which are not good things for communities yeah yeah so, so yeah all right yeah well, i can i can uh, okay so let, let's <laughs> proceed a little bit so so you get you, you got your therapy uh but that didn't solve it right no, i just uh, it was a band aid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so that means that it constrained you in some sounds that you were more functional. Is is mm -hmm. that? Okay. Oh yeah. Oh yes. <laughs> you want me to go on? <laughs> Only if you want to. I, I I can keep going. Yeah. No. It's just it it it. I was able to control the actions in which dictated my, which were controlled by my feelings. But um, then, how do I, then there was just the, uh, 
the growing pains of coming more into this world. And I mean, like, boys and friends beyond just being on a schoolyard together. The actual yeah, so learning. There's a complexity that yeah. you get introduced to. And and then is that also that the problems reemerge in, in a different uh, different form? Yeah. Yeah, they did. Um, they emerge in a different form by way of like how would I describe it? It it went the opposite direction of trying to just fit in for the sake of being fitting in rather than finding my place of fitting in. So then doing what other people did, because if they did it, then, you know, like that, or that's the way that you're supposed to like, explore or whatever I, I don't I don't know how to put it exactly but it did but it, it but it did manifest itself differently because I didn't like I didn't bully people or make them feel bad anymore I kind of just like went into like a kind of overly like, charity is 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 it like you like when when you bully that that is assertiveness right yeah you, you assert yourself and like it seems that in some sense you got traumatized by the assertiveness and and went went into the completely opposite point right like the other extreme. i think it was just like i think it was i think the way that i would probably describe it is like instead of being a violent assertiveness, it was an assertiveness of you're going to like me. I'm going to make you like me. And like, we're going to be mm. like, really, you're, you're going to like me, right? Like, please like me, please accept me, please like me. Like that sort of thing. Like, a, I guess you could say maybe more of like a politician <laughs> assertiveness where it's just like, let me campaign for, for your approval. Mm -hmm. So, Right. There's a dependence, right? And and then there's a like a co compulsive necessity to uh, what's the word to to attain that for yourself to to yeah yeah to to have that. So do do you the, the question I always have, right? When you bully people or when when you you, you go for that acceptance, right? And and you get your place, right? Like you get your your reward for for bullying or or for lobbying. Does that satisfy you? Like, no, no. So so why do you do it? Me. Like, like like that's that's always the question. Like, why are you pursuing something that's empty? Because you're crying out for help uh -huh. and you don't really know or like you don't really know or you don't have the hum humility to say i need help but i can't really tell you what how i need help like i i don't i don't know why i need help i don't know why i struggle with this mm -hmm. like why why someone tell me why like someone tell me how i feel someone tell me how um yeah, it's just like a loss, uh, like a loss because you need help. And and it's like nobody had ears to hear your cry. Yeah, or or yeah, or the right way to ask ask or talk about these things. It was just more of a you don't do that, like corrective correcting the action, as opposed to digging down to the root of it. Right, right, and and then yeah. That, that feeds on the insecurity right because you never yeah you never yeah. Get acknowledged um yeah like you're always going to be searching for what like that you're always going to be searching for the good thing but in that you're going to be asking why is it this bad thing that i feel you know like mm -hmm. you want it to be resolved which is a good thing 
but like because you don't know what needs to be resolved there's the question of like well how 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 do i search for this like how do i find it and uh yeah that's a it's a difficult thing to so, so to what's, go through what's, at such a young age yeah well yeah that's puberty right uh, mm -hmm. so so what's the next step like what's what the happens next step. yeah you 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 see the the boys and girls doing the boys and girls dance uh, you you're becoming a, a little politician um uh, like like uh then it goes into like then you get you fall into the wrong crowds and mm. from going into the wrong crowds uh then you start doing more just destructive behavior to you so in my case i think some people go inward and they become reclusive and then there's others like myself that party a lot and and uh look for that high because and I mean, like, high as in, like, oh, there's so many people around here and the dancing and the music, like, the elevation more than, like, substances, you know, um, I would say. So it's, like, is, is, is it change, change, chasing the excitement, right? Like, Yeah, chasing the excitement. It's like the, the – it's like because you start – like, for me, when I got I, – I had friends. Like, I met them in high, high school, right? Uh, cause it was mostly around high school that it started to be like that. It wasn't when I was younger before, like, so that phase that I'm talking about, the bullying phase was like elementary school. Then in middle school, toward the end of middle school here would be eighth grade. Uh, I changed schools and that's when I started going to Catholic school. And there I found people that I actually could be goofy, silly, uh like all into talking about backstreet boys and in sync like <laughs> all those things like and i felt really like uh, and i felt really connected right and then in high school but there was still like a, a loss there something that i was missing and then in high school i met friends and then i they they like to go party i went and partied with them and then i thought oh wow look at the excitement that we're having so many laughs and and everything and look at that person they're acting goofy and look at me i'm acting goofy and all that and so what i had gotten what i had found in middle school um i thought that this thing was exactly like that because of the feelings it was just the pure feelings but they lasted longer because it uh because like you can go to another party. You can, you know, do it another day and everything. And so that's where that that moved to mm -hmm. all those feelings and such. So, so you you said uh, bad crowds, right? Mm -hmm. or, or, and so, so you 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 end up with a friend group, which is a type of community, right? Yeah, exactly. It is communing around. Uh, debauchery <laughs> excess um yes hedonism and, hedonism and then <laughs> the party is also somewhat of a community right because like you no it is with with a purpose right no and it, and it is and here's it's, it's just like like again what you were saying earlier like a cult like you there's always going to be good communities and bad communities beneficial communities and destructive communities and it's around what it's centered around so going into those spaces and i mean this for you know like maybe if i may be so bold to say in such a recording that <laughs> those who struggle with drug addiction with alcoholism gambling a lot of those people, like there are the reclusives, so they'll go and get their fix and they 
do it by themselves or maybe a small group of people. And then there's the other side. And I think it's probably more of like a personality temperament that may dictate it. But I would say that that is a foundation. These are all people that have the same destructive, like, um, uh, ritual that I do. Um, and I can talk to them. I can commune with them. And even though in the end we're actually well, like at the end of the night, maybe we're fighting, maybe someone has an emergency that goes on. Um, in the Is end, it, these people are still like people. What, was, Me? Was that not the fighting and stuff? Oh, it, you know, it, it was a regular thing over time. Cause you know, like when you're young and you drink and then, you know, maybe, maybe you and your friend like the same guy, or maybe it's another girl that's not really your friend and you like the same guy or like, it's a, a guy that himself, that kind of, that you're with that goes and flirts with other people like alcohol and all of that kind of don't make the best pairings because then you have like the the drama like afterwards and i would say that it was more frequent than than not only because um only because I, I only because i wish that it didn't happen <laughs> now like i no, wish that yes. it didn't happen so did then you, for me it was you, too much you, one was too much one time was too much in the moment as well or because I, I can imagine that the drama is in, in some sense giving it meaning or, or like, like, like yeah. it's necessary as part of the ritual. Else, uh, else well, the partying the becomes thing. empty. Or... Well, yeah, because it's just like there's already a vapid em emptiness to that, too. I mean, like most of the time we're not so, like most of the time. It's not like it's not like now, like, you know, um, celebrating celebrating christmas for instance right people will come over gather there there may be like drinks and everything bottles of wine but like you're celebrating a very joyous occasion you know like you know why you're coming to celebrate going to partying it's like a very vapid shallow in the end you think about it and you're just like what am i like really doing here and um and it it is a uh sort of Oh, it's because there's this DJ. Let's just listen to this DJ or something. And it's just like it there's not there's not a stability around that. Like there's there's really nothing that you're actually communing over except commiserating over feelings that you guys are not sharing with each other, you know? Like you're celebrating you're celebrating your broken brokenness. That's how yeah. I look at it. Look at you. Look at you. You're just like, yeah, oh, no, I don't no, understand I, this. <laughs> No, 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 no. I, 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 I understand it, but, but I, I, I like this idea, right? That, that you, you're, you're coming together to shortly express your feelings, and then you don't. <laughs> like yeah. I, I like this idea, right? Yeah. That, that, it's like we a, all we're all we all know that we have problems and over time when you're like really good friends with someone you learn what those problems are like you know some of my best friends like of like of the time and you know people that I still hold dear to my heart even though we don't like talk as frequently I knew their problems you know they had deep problems just like I had deep problems so I at least like in 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 a tight like in a in our in a tight knit friend group I at least knew that we were what those problems were and they knew what my problems were but we would never talk about them you know it'd be like ah oh, forget that we're just gonna go out and do this and then we're gonna feel good you know mm -hmm. it'd be a deflection and a delusion yeah yeah, yeah. and avoidance right like yeah yeah <laughs> completely okay so yeah like you you also end up in a in a Christian Catholic school. Mm -hmm. so you, you get in contact with with a, a different type of community there. Like maybe you want to go into yeah. that a little bit. Yeah. So simultaneously, because these things at some point ran parallel with each other. Because I, from eighth grade on, I went to Catholic school, and when I was sixteen, um, when I was still with the the friend group that I connected with in eighth grade, right. 
I decided to become Catholic. I wanted to become Catholic. I was taken by the church. I went to World Youth Day. I saw this beautiful artwork, all these things. And I told my parents, like, I want to be Catholic. I, I just, I, there were, I knew that there was something that the church had that I wanted. And so I went through catechism. I got my, got my three sacraments. <laughs> uh baptism communion and confirmation like got those sacraments i was like good and then i met like cha-ching team god right and then i did meet those friends like just a year and a half later that i would party with and and so it was just like there's always there was always this like communal par like there was always this calling from god that was just like i got something here like I, there's something here, tap into this, go into this. But I still was like, ah, no, the feelings, the feelings, that's where, that's really where I find community, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So, and, and yeah. The church lost you, right? Like you. I lost. You, yeah. I, I, okay. At the time, well, now no, go ahead. At, at the time, I would have said that. But now. I lost the church. Like there was a certain sort of ministering that wasn't given very well um, post. It, it, and it's a, it's a problem that a lot of churches with youth ministries are um, like have acknowledged that like, once we have this arbitrary age of 18, where you become adult, we don't have much of a connection after that. And people fall away. Right. Mm -hmm. So I would have said that the church lost me, but really the church has always been there. I just didn't give it the attention to keep it there because I, I did get distracted, you know, like no one, the one thing about that, I, 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 the one thing about the church that I think some people even now, or especially now think is that like, we need to like strong arm people to remain here. Right. But there is a, but that's, that's, that's not, I don't believe that that is the church's job to like force people to do that. You know, I mean, like there is an acceptance that you have to have and, and a faith. Right. So that's where I believe that like I lost the church comes in because there was an accountability. I knew how to read. I was 18. I was 17. Um, I had gone to school and like I had gone to school and we took uh, religion classes, like Catholic religion classes and were taught the great saints of the church and the great theologians of the church. I could have picked up a book and like actually read more about it. And then okay, and, so and everything. What I'm going to ask you the question again. Yeah. What, what would have, what is the thing that you would have needed in, to do that because if you say it's my responsibility how could you have fulfilled it like like what what would Encour it encouragement like okay, encouragement. So that's, like, that's a failure yeah. of the church right do not give that. yeah and i think well in a way i think one thing i think one thing and i think it kind of is a silver like is is almost like a silver bullet in a way not like a foolproof but like a silver bullet of like oh that's the first thing I could have. I wasn't asked what, what parish are you a part of? Because framing it like that, it's like, Oh, I didn't actually really have a parish. I went to a, a, a youth ministry that was associated with a parish, but that was actually a youth ministry that was advertised in other parishes and even in, in, in everything. And it was word of mouth sort of thing that I've learned. Like that's where some of my friends went. That's how, that's the only reason why I knew, but if a youth minister had asked like, what parish are you a part of? It's like, wait, I'm supposed to be a part of it. Uh, I, I need to be a part of one parish. And it's not that we're not all Catholic. It's just like, a, Oh, I should probably think about like the parishes that I can go, go to and be a part of. So, There's so you a lack the framing. 
Yeah. You, didn't, you like that framing and, and that was not provided to you. Yeah. And because it's just like, what is community in like, what, what is a good community in the end? A kid community in the end is um, one that is there waiting for you when you return back. If you lose, if you, you go, which is why I don't blame the church because the church is always there. The church makes itself available and there is a certain level of participation that you should have, right? So had I known the framing of, oh, one parish, um, I could have thought like, oh, let me explore parishes. And usually when you come in as an inquirer, those parishes will, will be like, oh, okay, like, let me take you. Let me get your number. Let me encourage you right? Mm -hmm. Like there's a capturing when you come in as an inquirer that happens and, and, and everything. It's like a capture. Um, if you don't have one, because that's the one thing about people who are cradle, like they were born into the faith. They had no choice into the faith. Well, yes, and, and in some, some of them can't recognize that necessity that you had. Yeah, because because it's alien to them, right? Like they, yeah. they don't recognize that you don't understand what community is, and that like your life yeah. is actually because, in some sense around recognizing, yeah. right? Seeing and what that means. Exactly, and I mean, like you know, even now, like I see, like I see it, like in my church, like now at this point in the season, like Pasca has, like Pasca is done, and we're and now we're just looking forward to. Christmas, if you want to keep it very broad, right? So, and that reflects the church attendance because there's less people there. But mm. I will tell you, come December, that church will be filled because at the end of the day, those cradles know that this is like the glue that keeps my identity together. They will come back. And yes, that's not, that's not ideal, but that is something that is embedded. Like they, it's like a it's like a, a natural thing for them. They just like, it's, in their DNA. it's that, that season, you know, like me, it's a learned thing. Someone that came into the faith, like I did, it's a learned thing. So it's like, it has to be an encouraged thing of asking the question, are you a part of a community within this church? Yeah. Do you need one? Mm -hmm. Let me find you one. Where do you live? Right. And, and everything. And I think it's just a blind spot because I think it's only a blind spot because of the fact that that's not how it used to function. You know, um, mm. you were born around a parish and that was the parish that you went to. And now we have freedom of choice. So I could drive to like, for instance, I will give an example. Even now I live only four blocks away from a Serbian church. That church I first inquired in when I was still living in this house. Um, but now, but I, for, for different reasons, it's a different topic, but I decided to go to this Greek Orthodox church. I have to get in my car and drive. But really, had I just accepted my local parish, I'd be walking there. I'd be like a village Orthodox walking to my church. Because that's mm. the one that was right there. It's built in. And I have to accept everything that comes into that church. It's not a choice. Right. Um, and I think that in a, in a lot of ways, like you were saying with the cradle, but like, like you said, with the cradle, it goes into that where it's just like, oh, we don't realize this is a blind spot of like asking people, where is your parish? You know? Um, so, 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 yeah. I, I, I wanna... so I think that's like that. I want to put that back because you you did get educated into the the Catholic faith, right? So, so like, mm -hmm. do you feel like they told you the important things, right? Because like this was important to you, and they didn't tell you that. Like, do you feel like there's other important things that maybe were left out for new people? Uh, I think it's I I think. I think it's, it wasn't that there was a lack of telling the important things. I, I believe really what it is, is because it's not integrated in it. Like my particular school that I went to, like my, the eighth grade year, it was a school that was attached to a church. So we went to mass regularly. 
my high school was associated with the university. And so we would walk to go to mass, but there was like this, there was a separation between faith and education. You know, like you were educated in the faith while you were at the school. Sure. But it was like just another block that you took, you know, um, and like right, it was that's another... what I mean. So it's, it's not a personal, thing. it's not, I, I think it's like, it's not properly integrated. So naturally to be a part of like, mm -hmm. um, having like, for instance, we had a requirement to do like service, but here's a way to, and here's a better way to integrate it because we had to go out and look for a service to get our 40 hours for the semester, uh, and, and everything like the better way that it could have been integrated is that we as a class or whatever, we have this day where we get in a bus and we're taken to this organization where we feed the poor and we're doing it together as opposed to individually searching for it so we can fulfill the requirement on us. Right. Oh, so, so, so then the, we can the individualism graduate. In, the individualism infiltrated the educational system. Yeah, because you had to, because like the service hours, what you did with the service hours is you had to find a, you had to find uh, an organization to serve for, to give charity for like your time, right? We didn't do that together as a class or anything. That is, that is an integration that should be there as opposed to, okay, like what, what counts as a service hour? Oh, I can do a soup kitchen. And yes, I went to soup kitchens and I did that and I met other people, but we didn't go to the same school. We weren't a part of the same community. We, some of us weren't even the same like age. They were like adults that gave their time because they wanted to. Whereas me, I gave my time because I had to. And like, what was I going to talk to an older person about? Right. So did, did, did you experience it as service or as a chore? I experienced it as a chore. Right. For, yeah, I experienced it. As and a chore. and do you think do you think that if you'd done that with the whole class, that that would have been different? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do. Because um, because there was a there there we did that a couple times when I was eight in eighth grade. We went to a local Catholic soup kitchen and we did that together, and um. We, it was, it was the, the, we knew each other and we were in the kitchens together and we were putting it, serving it together. Like we went through this whole big process together to help these group of people that came in that have no homes. Like we were part, we were going through each step, what it takes to get it, which is something that when we talk about giving service, when we talk about giving service and serving others, it's really going through the labor of doing something for that person, right? It's not just throwing money at the problem. We can all donate our money all the time, but like the time, the, our time, our free time, that we have to put the labor into like getting to that point. You know, mm -hmm. we have to like if you if you are making a, a project for someone, you know, that you're going to donate to an organization, you have to go out and go get those materials, whether you go to a store or you build them yourself. You have to construct that thing. You have to build it and then you have to give it to that person and you have to approach that person and converse with that person, um, you know, and it, and and this is in you know, making rosaries, um, and icons, you see this, like they labor in prayer to create those things that go out into the community. They don't just, it doesn't magically appear and see when you do that, there's a connectedness that happens because your labor was translated that's, into love and service. Right. And that's intimacy or, and, yeah. or at least the capacity for intimacy. And, and so, yeah, like when you say you just if you give the money or you, you, you come to your McDonald's job in, in, in the soup kitchen, right? Like there's, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And so it, it felt way more, um, 
it felt way more pleasing. Like, like now one of my favorite things that I did this past year, and I hope that I get to do it again is I was, um, the Christian action program mom for one of my son's classes. And what it was is you were, so there's a room parent that does like the parties, the fun parties and everything. Right. I was the parent that came in once a month to administer a service project for the kids that we would give to an organization, right? Because they're too young. They can't do like certain services, but they can make cards and things, right? And it was so, it was a lot because I mean, like these are young kids. So trying to explain to them what you're going to do is already a labor of itself of like, oh, this and then, hey, Mr. Uh, like, hey, can you come over here? Like, uh, so-and-so's mom, like, can you come and help me? I don't know how to do this. You know, like that whole process was like, whoa, like there's so many kids calling my name and they need help to do this. And maybe this project like was too complicated or whatnot, but they had so much, they had joy and happiness while they were doing their things. And I mean, like some of the, the outcomes of it were just so ch childlike. Like it was like, it was, it wasn't the most refined or whatever you want to finish product product. Right. But they participated in something and it was fun and it was labor labor. And even though the people that received these never met the kids, they had such a fulfillment of knowing that they received something. We took the time out of their day to do it. And it was a feeling for me because of the fact that it, it was a connection, you know, like you have to connect like in my, this instance, you connect kids with this idea of service of other people, of these people don't uh, like, do not have things that you probably have in some capacity, serve them. You know, let's talk about service and how we can serve other people. And it's, and it's, it's beautiful because, um, then it passes on the giving to others, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Back. So, so. Well, why did we get here? <laughs> I know it's well. We, we here's jumped the, a little bit, but I think it, I think no, it's we did, an we message. did, we did. But I think it's like, um, like, and here's the difficulty in in talking about these things is like for me, I always have difficulty talking about these like things in life uh, that that we know exist uh, and as concepts because for me it's like it's a lived thing. So mm -hmm. it's like for me to like try and stay on a linear path kind of to like explain it is really difficult for me. I have a difficulty with that because I just do it. Mm -hmm. So how do I ex well, yeah, you explain don't, you don't, that? You don't have to explain it. You just. No, I know, but I, but it goes <laughs> off into other different things. Like these no, things, I, I, like, I, you know, I agree. So, so it's, so it's, yeah. So, the, the, so you the, have to the bring me back. The importance of, of service Right. And, and in some sense, I think you're making the case that if they had introduced me to what service truly is, right, your yeah, participation that you're talking with the community, right, right, then that would have been the glue that held my bond. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's, um, because over time, in every job that I had, which we were talking about this before the stream, when we were trying to figure out exactly what was going to be the glue that holds this conversation together. Right, exactly. You had mentioned, <laughs> you had mentioned my hospitality experience and being in there. And to go back to the beginning of our conversation, to bring it all together in a nice like bow sort of thing, to get it back on the path. <laughs> is that my talent, my drive has always been to connect with people as a community member. Right. And, and you could say that you're bullying and you're uh, being a politician were 
trying to faulty implementations <laughs> exactly exactly they were faulty uh, implementations but like you know even though yeah like working for a hotel and such the like in an, an airline like yeah i'm getting paid to do that so i have to be there but honestly like i loved being there i in mm -hmm. fact if there were not any labor laws i would have kept working because i loved doing it so much i love being around people and talking to people and connecting with people, even people that you would think on the surface, we would not have any common ground. And that's the amazingness of the complexity of humanity is that we all actually do have something that we can connect on. You know, we just mm -hmm. have to get, get there, get to that. So, yeah. So you, you did high school and then you went to uh, London. Yes. Uh, like, is, is there something specific in your communal relations no. there? Because no, but but it, it is it, it is a different country, right? Community. Yeah, yeah, but, it was a different country. Ooh, I, I will say the one thing I learned about it for sure that like it reframed the way that I I see that we function here in in America is that like uh, mm. there's a common there is a common national identity if you will like oh, you, that mean, you mean Europeans you mean the, have. the well is, is it the anglo the, it's no it's i would say i it's not just indicative to to the anglos i think it's also existent in europe and well really that whole like europe and asia like the whole block which is like you i admire it because you could actually talk about what is it that makes you dutch exactly what is a like what like if you were to get like 20 dutch people dutchians no. dutch <laughs> in a room what is it that you guys would all be like yep that's a dutch thing that's that's no, what we no, do here. No that's what i do this that's that's and I think that you guys could come up very seamlessly with like five to 10 things that are just like, this is what a Dutch is 100%. Yes. Whereas we have a, and I think it, it, I think that it creates a more cohesive sense of community for you guys that you maybe don't realize because you, you're always going to experience like the everyday, like, oh, this person's annoying or like, oh, this yeah, person's I, like, I have crazy. To say, when, like, when I'm on holidays, right, in a different country and I see mm -hmm. Dutch people, that's bad. <laughs> <laughs> Why like, I, I always, I always feel ashamed for Dutch what? people. Wait, 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 you, can, you can recognize them from, from miles away. Like it's, it, it's yeah. funny because you know them, right? Like, you know, yeah, it. and yeah, why is know. it, why is it? Because you know that like 100%. <laughs> now I could say that I 100% can spot an American for the most part, like going foreign places but it's not for like the good reasons which of course i know that you just said it's a bad thing but like which i would love to he hear more about that but no no <laughs> just, but yeah but that's like a put a pin in that conversation but like i admire that about every other because they can all name their that is the one thing that i know that stuck with me on my experience with london is that i went to like it wasn't even just english people it was also like i like i there was this one bar that i went to that was a south african bar you had to like go down it was so cool like you had to go down steps to like get to a like to get to the door to get into it and everything right and it was such an amazing thing to see these south africans all coming together to like just like this is a south african bar this is where we identify with even though we live here and we're probably going to live here for the rest of our lives or whatever like i will always be south african you know like i don't have to do and i think there's something really beautiful about that connection that that we don't really have so robustly here like, and maybe it's more so the fact that I live in California. So a lot of people just like, we have a rotation of people that were not born and raised here, you know, 
Um, so we just don't know what we are. That's why we can't keep sports teams. But like, you know, you go to some other states that have sports teams that like have never won a championship in their life and people will still buy season tickets and like, you know, like be there. Like they'll, they'll go to those sporting events, even though they know that nine times out of 10, they're going to lose that game. But it's because like that is your team. Like they accept that. Maybe it's because I'm Californian. So I won't say it's like all of America, but that's what I'm going with. Anyway, sorry. That, that's the one thing that I could say that I took from that. I didn't realize it until I came back that I took from my experience from London about community. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. So on the individualism track, do, do you think that being in a different country, um, uh, like, did you, did that alienation put you more in the individualist bucket? And like, is that partying as well? Like, did, did that become more yeah. excessive? Yes, I think it did because it was just like I still didn't I I still didn't have like I still didn't know the question that I needed an answer for. Mm -hmm. You know? Right. And so it there was a separate like so it just created a, a that separation. You know, but, but, like it was but you had you had an integrity that said, no, I should not do this. Like this is not my place, right? Like I, yeah, uh, I wouldn't call it an integrity. I had a knowledge that I shouldn't be doing this, but it does but, didn't but you change acted the behavior. Upon it. Well, yeah, but you acted upon it, right? You you quit your studies, right? Like, it... yeah. Well, it was kind of more of a forced thing, I okay. guess. You could say. Like <laughs> it did it did not end well. It was not like a, oh, this isn't good for me. I need to go back home. It did not end well. Okay, so you you, you basically failed. Oh yeah, okay, one hundred percent. Like, just if there was ever like an Olympic sport for failure, I think I would have gotten a gold medal. Okay. So, so, <laughs> so what does that do to you? So, you go to a different country and you fail, um, and you're un unmoored. Um, so yeah, like, how do you deal with that? Like, is, is that disastrous or is it just something that you like? It was. It was disastrous also, right? because it was disastrous because of still not the acknowledgement or the realization of your place in community because your actions do affect other people. And sometimes you don't really realize that other people long to do the things that you were blessed to do mm -hmm. that you took for granted mm -hmm. because like I will say I disappointed my mom greatly. Like to this day, I think that it, it's still, I know not, I don't think I know it still affects her because she wished that she would have known that it was an option to go over to Europe and study. Cause she didn't have, she didn't have that knowledge and she would have done that because in the end, like, so I was raised. So my because and this is important like my mom is half japanese half black but she she and she grew up in a time where she was like you would say one of the first wave of like groups of of halfies halfies of you know um which is a term that they use it's usually a derogatory said in a derogatory manner but um she felt so isolated from her identity when she was on the mainland of America, but she felt her, some of her happiest moments that I hear when she talks about them are when my, uh, are when she had to live in Hawaii because my grandfather was in the Navy and when uh, they, and then when he, um, when they were stationed, so stationed in Hawaii and then stationed in, um, Stationed in Hawaii and then stationed in Japan. Those were the times in her life where she felt the most um, connected to people. Um, and so for her, when she came to London, she saw something that she had experienced in it was like it, there there was something about it that she 
felt was so close to the times in her life that meant the most to her because there was, mm -hmm. and I think it was, I think it was community, you know, that there was like a, uh, understanding of, of being a collective as an individual, you know, rather than an individual that, that, you know, is an individual. And when I failed and when I did not stay, it greatly disappointed her because I know that she would have, I, I know that she was like, wow, she's, she's finding a sense of something that she denied now that I was past that point that I, um, that I wasn't going to church because she had the same light in her eyes as when I became a Catholic. There was like a, she's finding So she was something. living vicariously for you, but I, yeah, I wouldn't say by she was living vicariously through me because she never actually forced anything. She had she just merely well, I mean, admired. Yeah, yeah, no, she merely admired that I took the risk to do something to find a better sense groundedness. Mm -hmm. You know, okay. because yeah. but, I, but, it's, but it's interesting because you you didn't have that feeling in, in Europe, did you? Of connectedness? Yeah. You know, in a funny way, yes, I did. Because um, I I had always, like, I had, I my, going to grandmother's house, or at least one grandmother's house, was getting on a plane flight to go to Japan for, like, a month or two. So mm -hmm. going over there and being this and not speaking Japanese, automatically, gaijin, you're, you're a foreigner. So I knew... So I felt comfortable being a foreigner because I had been raised in in that and and accepted as a foreigner, even though I was a family member. So I was a, I was treated as family, but I was a I was a foreigner family as opposed to a like family Japanese fellow Japanese family. So going to another country and living there did not feel weird to me because I had already I had already experienced what it was like not being of that completely or at all right so to me um like i felt it's it's one part of my life i wish i would have just stayed and i would have like found endurance to stay because there was that connectedness there so okay yeah, it's I'm, a weird I'm, thing. I'm, I'm probably going to butcher this, but you said it's okay. being in a collective as an individual. So mm -hmm. do you feel like being the foreigner is that which allows you to keep your individualism? And now that I think of it, like that's also a lack of commitment, right? Because you, you, you haven't integrated, you haven't nationalized. Um, well, I did. Well, I, I know that that takes a while to do. I think more so what it is. I think what what it was, was I think the way the reason why it was fine for me to be comfortable for me to be a foreigner is because I was open to being taught how things were supposed to be. OK, and, and you don't on you don't how can I be. How can I be a part of this? Teach me your ways. And you didn't have that in America? Mm-mm. Could you, could you explain Because you got to find yourself. You got to, you, like, you are encouraged to find yourself, to find your own path. The, mm. the, that is the, I would say, like, the spirit of America is to create something new from your for yourself out of nothing you know mm -hmm. and you will somehow like get an idea or a vision as you are pioneering to the next day's destination like i i think that's so embedded in the psyche here mm -hmm. and it's 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 great if you are someone who is an adventurer and can um kind of find out how you settle in a place um 
once it's there, like when you have the discernment, because when you listen to stories about pioneers and, and people coming over here, they came for a hope and a dream, a hope and a dream. And they, they held on to whatever that hope and dream was, and they didn't even know what it was. And then it, when they knew that it was time to settle, they settled. Like it's, it, I like it's beautiful, but at the same time, I think the majority of us do have to have some bit of instruction of like, this is what you do. You know, there's a, um, because a lot of people here, we're only a lot, a lot, there's a, many generations that are only here because they were, that we, is because they were came over, they came over here and they were, or they were brought over here and, um, they had to, like figure it out. Um, but, 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 but they were like, there, there was a re heavy religious and cultural component in, in most of that still. Right. Like, but not a, but not a cohesive one, like individual church one. Yeah. Well, I think, like, I, I think that might've been something that developed later on, but no, no. Um, like the Catholics, they have a very strong cohesiveness, which there is a division or there was a division at one point with Italians and like Irish communities for sure. Like not yeah, yeah, but each other as brothers and sisters, but all the other, but like, I would say the Protestant branch, they, they have a, they, they had a really early split. I mean, like, you know, the, the pilgrims coming over in Plymouth, they were not a part of the wider Anglican church at that point. Like, right, right, right. Like, I'm, I'm not, I'm not trying but to make siloed. a universality argument, but I'm like, e even the Protestant churches, right? They, they get it around nationality, language, uh, common purpose, like farming or whatever, right? Like, th there was, there was this sense of community and, and binding that, that, did happen and I don't think is happening anymore, right? Like that social structure that was there, like didn't didn't persist through time because of the individualist aspect that, that you're talking about now. Like I, I think that's a fairly recent development, at least in the way that it's manifesting now. Because oh, yeah. you you, I... you 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 couldn't really be independent like in the start, right? Like. Like that, I, I don't think that was an option. Like yeah, yeah, all all of these networks, right? Where where the Irish got got. It like, was probably I would have to say maybe we can maybe the point of of it was the westward expansion because mm -hmm. moving westward was definitely an individual choice. Like yeah, that's for the crazy people. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All the crazy people went out west, mm -hmm. right? The only uh, but. I think that the spirit of individualism has always just it's embedded in and I'm not knocking being an American. I'm just saying like our no, no, I, I agree. I every, agree that, like that. our revolution, like the revolution that we had to, you know, become America and what the the documents that are the basis of our very the very structure of our, our of our government, of our federal government is laid upon like an individuality. I, I agree, right? That spirit is definitely in, in the background. Uh, yeah. But I, I, I'm just I'm just making a distinction with how it's now and, and, and in the past. But um, oh yeah, I mean, like the, the thing is, is that things like that, like just because you declare something in a document, doesn't mean that like automatically everybody becomes like that. I mean, there's there's so many ties that you just can't break through. I, I'm I'm sure because I think I heard it somewhere. I, I think I heard it somewhere that. Even George Washington had still like certain aspects to him, like cultural aspects that came from from Britain, you know, because mm -hmm. he was that's where his family was ultimately felt like his lineage is connected to. So it's like you don't break off those things. It just it dies a it's things that the next generation either accepts or denies. Well, it's it's interesting because if you if you take the Dutch immigrants, right, like they mm -hmm. they come in a wave, right? So they mm -hmm. they keep the culture from when they left, mm -hmm. and then the Netherlands changes, right? But they're mm -hmm. trying to maintain 
what that, they took with them. And yeah. So you, you, you get this, this dissonance and these time capsules. And yeah, it's, it, that's fascinating. Yeah, no, there's this. So there is a series called American Girl. And each of the American girls, like these 10, they're like 10, 11 year old girls. They all tell a different a story of like, basically, I would say the in inception of America. And one of them was a Swedish immigrant, Kirsten. And she like the first book was her on a boat and like her on a boat coming over here through Alice Island. I think that's yeah, that's probably where she landed. Yes, because they were in New York and her remembering like things that they happen in Sweden. And then they settle in Minnesota. And like over time, you kind of you see that like they're they still were tr maintaining their Swedishness, but like there's like a, a a an assimilation that happens to like be something more American. Which of course at that time, because I forgot what her, I think it's like, I think she was like maybe the doll that re represented this community in like what seven eighteen hundreds. I, see, I had to look up when she lived. I'm not good with dates, but all I know is that, like, all I know is that you kind of see, like, that being, like, a, the you, you see the seeds of, like, the, the um, moving away from your motherland, but, like, still maintaining it sort of hodgepodge okay. thing. So, yeah, so when, when, when I talk to women, like, I, I get the sense that they're really sensitive to cultural osmosis, mm -hmm. right? So, so you you were feeling the oppressive nature of the individualist spirit in America in a way mm -hmm. that that wasn't there in in London. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and and so yeah, let's let's keep keep going, right? So so you come back. Uh, did you immediately go to do the, uh, the, what was it? The interior design? No. Yeah. No. So, no. so you, you work in the service industry then? Mm -hmm. I worked in the service industry and then I went back to school and I, and then I, uh, well, I worked in the service industry and then I Is, had... did that provide your community? Is that something that like completely captured, captured you in some sense? Yeah. Yeah, I enjoyed going to my work to my job every day, and then um, I had I found out that I was gonna have a baby girl, and that set off that changed everything in my life. Um, having her, and um, So in what way? Like, did, did that change your priorities? And It made me start to ask the question of how am I supposed to be in this world? Like, mm -hmm. what is, what is my path? Because now there's someone that rely that that's relying on me for care. And part of that care is like directing her. How can and, I even do that if I don't even know? And, right? and so why why didn't you ask yourself that question before? Or like like is there a new way that you could ask that question to yourself? Like like how did that work? Why didn't like why didn't I ask before? Uh I didn't ask before because uh I like I didn't think about it. I was just an emotional impulsive person. Like I just, you go with the, you go with the flow, you go with the flow and life will take you where it takes you. But that yeah. is when it started to become intentional because it had to be. Yeah. So you, you got know? grounded by it. Like cause mm -hmm. there was an external thing that, that right. Like it's it, yeah. in, in post community. <laughs> yeah. And, and here's the thing is like, it's, it's so interesting because like when you are allowed to be in it, like run on individualism and being an individual, it's all fun and games when you are like, when you don't have kids, but it's funny how the community, once you have a kid, it expects you to just 
have your stuff together and provide mm -hmm. stability because it knows that that's what kids need. And it's just very, it's, uh, uh, that was such an interesting shift because the people around me, they had, they had different expectations because I needed to be here and it's not a bad thing. It's just like, I had never noticed that before because it was never something that was brought to notice because it was never something that was brought to notice. And that was when it became clear that there was a stability that needed to happen of some sort. And it, and it, did, did that alienate you as well from those people because they just couldn't participate with you anymore? Yeah. My old, mm -hmm. like the, the life that I was living beforehand with the friends that I had, um, I like, I was the first of my friends to have kids and to be perfectly honest, all the friends that I, that had kids, like they've only had kids in the past, like five years. So I had, I was in it by myself cause I was 23. I, and I'm 38 now. So I was in it by myself, um, to figure it out by myself, to try to integrate who I am inherently with who I needed to become what who, who I needed to become in this role. Um, and that's when I started looking. That's when I started the, that I, I would say that that is when I really started to um, take it seriously and capture on because then I met my husband and it was alluring the of being told I wasn't a Christian for one and that there was and that like and being brought to a church that did have a sense of community. Mm -hmm. And that was what I rode with. Like when, when I started, when I started to be a Protestant and, and everything. Um, and there was an, it was the allurement of the community with a stability of like getting answers or guidance. And um, yeah, like that was, that was like the, I, so, did did they actually do that, or did they give you the sense of that they were doing that? They gave me the sense. Okay. They gave me the sense. Like I think they did. I like. Uh, you know what? I think they did, but like they just gave me more of a sense of it. I mean, like there's a difference between knowing that there's like something there, um, and then also now being more settled in my faith, um, having the eyes to see like uh, that's not the most productive like good way does that make yeah like yeah but but there, there was something true about yeah what they were doing yes they're them. they're like they, they were genuine people and they were there for for people i mean like when i when i started having our sons like um they had they would bring pre-made meals and for me like that first the first couple of weeks for the family to eat because they knew like, you know, the wife can't, can't do anything or shouldn't do anything. Cause she just had a baby. Let's take, take care of her. So they, mm -hmm. they had that, you know, like they had that, that, that community to it. And it was the, it was, it was an introduction of what definitely could be my having my daughter just triggered that sense of needing that. And so then any, I equated that connection to having a husband to create this family and have a cohesive family that was a building block of a community as opposed to just me being one block in a community. It was like, ah, oh, like I, I, I had this, this, I have this child. I need to create like, a sense of unity mm -hmm. to fit in, you know, like, it's not good that I, it's not good that I, um, that I do this by myself with this child. Like I need more for this child. So, so do, like, it's that I got a sense that there's something in the background of this fitting in of your youth that. Yeah. But you, here's the thing is that you 
we found one topic to talk about. And that is what's so complex about these things is that the lived experience has so many multiple levels. Like that's why it's like you like having one, one topic. It's like, that's like a different video. <laughs> no, no, I, I, but I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just like, it, so, so that's still the same spirit that's uh, driving you then. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And, and, yes. and, and, Oh, that's where you're getting at. Yeah. No, it's yeah. still the same. And, story. So yeah, you, no. Do you feel that you, you still go misguided by that spirit in some sense? Because I I think I'll always struggle with that. I think I'll always struggle with that because I think that there it's not about like I think we have a misunderstanding of what perfection is in the faith from our point of views. Like we feel like somehow these things are gonna go away, mm -hmm. right? that may be true about certain aspects that you fall into, you know? Um, like I, like I'll, I'll give an example. I still love having gatherings, you know, like going to dinners, going, going to, um, going to dinners, having festivals and dancing, but I have no inclination of like going to bars and drinking and, uh, and going to clubs and dancing like none of that like there's not a moment and i like even now like i've i've you know my kids have been with grandma for like you know months weeks now that um that at any point had that old me really been there i would have been going and partying i would have done that you know like i would have felt like i needed to like reclaim my youth and my independence and all of that I don't struggle with that. Right. However, going back to your question, like, I think I will always struggle with what I would call people pleasing. I think I will always struggle with that. It's just something that I think is, is, is the sort of a darker aspect of me that I just acknowledge exists and will probably be with me for the rest of my days. Now, whether I act on it, and what I do with it is a different thing that I that I really cling on to to guard myself not to give into. Mm -hmm. So I don't have I don't have a sense of shame where I feel like 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 I have I have there is a a sense of shame that I have over now coming into a space of being divorced. You know, I'm not mm -hmm. proud of it. I'm not happy of it. I I have like I know over the years I've read articles about people having divorce parties and separation parties and everything. I think it's disgusting. Like there's there is like a, a sense of shame that it's come to this, right? Mm -hmm. That being said, um I don't suddenly have the same impulse uh, I don't have the same impulse that I feel that I need to now line up another husband. You know? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't, I don't, that, but I do, I would love to have that because I, I believe in the sacrament of marriage. I believe in what marriage is, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, there is the, I guess the fact, and then there's like the fact and then the feeling with that fact. And then there is the, but I know that I cannot let the other side of wanting to have yeah, it it all corrupt together. It, right? Yeah. yeah will, like I'm I'm not gonna like make I'm not going to suddenly make decisions to make up for that. You know, mm -hmm. if it's yep. something that is not within God's will to happen, again, well I have I I accept that as difficult as it may be to live within that will and to to do as well, that I will continue to go down that path as opposed to my own path, you know? Okay. So um, the other thing that stood out to me is, right, you, you, you said things became clear, right? And you recognized the needs that, that the church was uh, providing in, right? So mm -hmm. like, it seems like you got, you got a, a level of discernment, uh, level of uh, capacity to ask the right questions. Mm -hmm. And, Maybe you lack the judgment that was associated with asking those questions, right? Like, mm -hmm. because 
because well it was new right like what <laughs> was a new way of relating for you um so yeah you think you think that's an accurate description yeah yeah so 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 yeah may, maybe i i guess i i want to want a reflection like you you think that's just unavoidable that you just end up with these oh this is the right way but if you're not grounded in a community and tradition there's no way to evaluate the quality of yeah the thing that seems right yeah i think so like once you start like sometimes your choices are bad choices sometimes you're not like a lot of us are not as wise as we want like as we think ourselves to be so what does our discernment really mean right so looking at looking at other traditions or cultures um and whether that's historic like in a historical sense like looking back at how families were in america right you read books on that or traveling to a different culture um you like if you don't yeah it's like the echo chamber it's like if you don't actually kind of look into it you can't question the quality of it you know sometimes you have to look outside to question the quality okay so then that, you, you yeah no 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 no, no I like okay. that I like that. <laughs> so you you go to Protestantism, you re-engage with, with faith, you re-engage with true community. Um, and then what 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 happens? You you leave the church? Yeah, in a manner of speaking. But yes, yes, left the church and then it came up. I mean, it's, it's what happened. It was not really 100% my story to tell, but um, so I'll just like leave that part private. But in the end, I did take up the mantle to explore orthodoxy when it became an option. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and and you did, you did that from, from your, your marriage. Right. And then, yeah you you enter in into orthodoxy so so what is the questions that orthodoxy answered that the the protestant church did not uh, provide sufficient grounding how how can you live with yourself when you know that you do or that you do bad thing or that you sin how? Because it's not going away. This feeling is not going away. This wanting is not going away. How, how do you live with that? You can like for the rest, how, how do you live with that? There's no, to, to me in my, in my time in Protestantism, there was this need to just be better, right? To work to work toward being better, right? And although that is true in orthodoxy, it's not the same. You know, it's there is there is a freedom of acknowledging that this is something that's always going to be a difficulty for you. And that's fine because it's not about making it go away because this is a fallen world. There's going to be lots of things that come in. There's going to be lots of temptations that will happen. Like you are going to fail. You are set up to fail multiple times because of your own iniquities. Like, you, but that's okay. That is, that is okay. And, um, And you don't have to do that privately and alone. You can commune with others. Mm -hmm. You can talk with others. You'll have you'll have sponsors, godparents. Um, but most importantly, you will have to participate in a sacrament in which um, you will have to participate in a sacrament in which someone that's a human 
that's ordained will have to listen to your confessed sins. And even though he's not the one that absolves you, it's God that absolves you, you're going to have to make it a, a public thing. And there's a freedom in that because it's like someone knows. Someone knows that that behind the laughter, behind the smiles, behind the, the hospitality, there's a struggling person. And they don't hold it against you. They want to help you and guide you, you know? Um, and there's a beauty in that. And it, that's in the Catholic church too. Um, don't, don't get me wrong, but you know, we don't need to go in the reasons why I didn't go back to being a Catholic. That's again, different topic. Uh, that'll send us down a road, but, um, so, so I, I want to contrast it to the Protestant church. So, so mm -hmm. what, what made you unable to get that in, in the Protestant church? Unable to get it because, um, unable to get it because it was like a, there felt something wrong about denying something that was so inherent in me, you know, like this, this thing, these, these impulses, these feelings that I have, like you just have, it's like you pray it away, you know, mm -hmm. um, you, you pray it away for it to go away rather than knowing that it's going to be there. Are you ready to fight? And the fight also within Protestantism was more about the world as opposed to yourself. You know, um, there was just a lot of judgmentalism about looking out into the world and criticizing the world as opposed to just examining yourself, minding your own business, so, so, and examining so, yourself. Yeah. You're you're saying that there's a lack of responsibility in the Protestantism? Uh, no, no. I would say it's more of a your responsibility is to your responsibility is to tell everybody else why they're doing what they're doing wrong. So, 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 so the the responsibility is misframed. Yeah, I would say that. Yeah. Okay, and and so th the way that you described it is that they're acting as mini gods, passing out the law. You said it, not me. Okay, well that that <laughs> that, that, that that hit the spot. Good, like <laughs> I'm like you said it, not me. Like there's there's a legalism that happens, even if they're talking about like, oh, like, mm. even if that's something, but there, there's, a, there's, there's a legalism, like, you know, I, there is a, there, there has been such a freedom becoming Orthodox. Why? Because I don't have to, I don't have to say like, even this conversation, I can hear someone say she's wrong. Right. And yeah, it'll hurt my ego because I still have that, but I'm willing to admit that Parts and pieces of this whole journey that we've been on in this conversation are wrong. My perceptions are wrong. My wording is wrong. I didn't, I, I didn't have that freedom because it's like there's always reading, 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 studying, 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 like understanding, understanding. And it's like a rush to be an A plus student in theology. Whereas like now it's perfectly like it's perfectly okay in fact it's encouraged to almost be seen as the village idiot because you just don't know and it's okay to not know and yet because you don't have to like defending of the faith is not predicated on you being able to speak about your faith it is predicated on you being told that you have to do something that you know God does not want you to do and to have the courage to say it because in the end, he and the armor that he's provided through prayer, fasting, all of those things, 
are going to be there for you. And that it's not about this life, you know, like it's not about this life. It's about the next one. There's, there's something beyond this. And so if this is the worst thing that could possibly happen to you, because you have to say, I'm a Christian and I can't do this. This is not it. Like, just know that there's something better beyond that. I mean, like, that's what the, the saints, the martyred saints, um, like represent. That's what their stories are. That's what the saints that were seen as weird because they were ate bugs or they were like in the desert. That's what they had to experience. Um, and then there were saints that lived in, uh, in village, uh, villages that like, you know, they were scandalized um, and whatnot. And they just accepted it because it was about you and God as opposed to what other people, as opposed to you defending yourself for the sake of your own pride, quite possibly, most likely. Right. You know, I, I was I was going to bring that in, right? So, because like the way that you describe the A plus theological student, like it it means that that implies that you you can know something, and through the knowing of God, you you mm -hmm. become a better person or whatever, or you resolve uh, yeah. the the issue. And and there, there's a, there's a hubris in that, right? Where mm -hmm. where it's like bringing heaven down to you. <laughs> yeah, it, there's this wonderful um, there's this one wonderful podcast um, from um, I always get it's Father John, but I always forget his last Father John Strickland called Paradise and Utopia, and it goes over the history of the church and. Um, basically examines things from the Western and the Eastern church where uh, the Eastern church views things as paradise, like moving toward paradise, going toward paradise. Right. Whereas utopia is this idea of the West of like bringing heaven to earth, right. Heaven on earth. Mm -hmm. And it's very interesting to see, to hear about the historical kind of diversions of that. Um, and that is that is what I always think of. That that's what I know that I fell into is like I have to evangelize for these things almost as if God can't do it himself. You know, like there's a pride that you get, like I know scripture, therefore, um, I have like I know scripture, therefore, like God can like. I can defend God and God doesn't need our defense. Right. Um, and then there is just like, I think it's allowed for so many people to believe that they're experts when they're really not. And we have like this abundance of people that have charismatic personalities in which they can have the influence of seeming like they have the expertise. And I think it's, it's like a, because we associate assertiveness with experts expertise it comes together in this way i don't know how to explain it <laughs> let's no, drop it no no i'm i'm definitely not gonna drop this because <laughs> well, well why don't why don't we just stay there for a different time i i i definitely want to yeah go about this a, a different time i i just want to point at, at right like god cannot do it for himself um so i want to connect that to faith uh mm -hmm. so, so do you did, did did your conception of what having faith is change yeah okay so can you say something about that faith is a, faith is not about what you can do for god but what god can do for you because you need it. He doesn't. Like, he doesn't. You need it. And you need mm -hmm. it badly. And you don't know how much you need it. And even when you think that you don't need it anymore because of your own pride, hey, look, there's something else that comes up in your life. Like, 
Yeah, you're going to need How it. How you're right? handling it. <laughs> yeah, right. That was, you, you go into the new situation. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you know you need it, but you can't judge the quality, right? That's that's mm -hmm. where you need God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, so, yeah. And then now you're, well, we kind of went over that. You're, you're in the schools of your children, right? So you, you're, you're providing... Uh, the communal experience, or, or you're participating in the communal experience on on multiple uh, dimensions. Uh, is, is there something you'd like to add? Like, like I don't to... know. No. Okay. Well, no. no I don't that's, know. That's fine. So, so I, I, I just, I just want to like rehash, right? Oh yeah, that, no, no, it's that fine. that we went through it. So, so you're you're now in some sense right like you're you're still dealing with the repercussion from the divorce right so you're mm -hmm. you're, you're not grounded completely in in the community right and, and you say like over the last two years like uh being in the faith journey is actually uh made it real right like like mm -hmm. community and and, and you, you yeah. get the sense that you kind of have like a bit of the true flavor of, of what it's supposed to be yeah um and and how it can and and how it, i can have that in the world because um it's not about siloing yourself into just that it's like how can you put that out into the world you know to remember that to everybody that you encounter mm -hmm. so, so that's yeah. giving giving back to the world mm -hmm. so, so yeah i i want to go five years into the future um, so everything goes goes perfectly right like everything happens according to the will of god um you you end up perfectly integrating with your community your your, your children uh take on their responsibility within the community uh so so what does life look like in five years i don't know I don't know. I honestly don't. I can tell you what I hope it looks like, but I. Yeah, yeah, that's. No, no, that's like I'm not going to say it out loud. You, you, why not? You think you're going to jinx it by by saying it? No, it's just kind of. I don't. I try not to. I try not to get too excited about things. Too many expectations. Well, <laughs> well it's not about expectations. It's, it's about aspirations. Aspirations. Well, aspirations would be, I don't know, how big? Like, does, does this mean well, that, 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 that's, does that's this mean I, I have infinite amount of money? Like, what are the parameters? No, I'm yes. kidding. I'm kidding. I know, no, I know you, what you, you mean. I know what you mean. You have infinite <laughs> whatever, right? Like, I am a billionaire by doing this billionaire thing, and this is what five years would look like. <laughs> no, well, how um, materialist of you? <laughs> <laughs> no, um, how? What I can only. I think the only aspiration that I actually just really have is to center my life and my children's life around service to communities mm -hmm. um, and to put more emphasis on giving time to that as opposed to their own accolades. That's the, and my own, you know, um, like, I know I'm doing like streaming and some, and I'm going to, you know, like put out videos, like, you know, playing video games and stuff. But those are just things that I just, they're fun to do. But I, I don't care if something comes out of it. Right. So I hope to still be doing that just out of fun. And, but really just kind of centering things on building communities and encouraging people to assimilate back into their communities. Um, okay, what so, would be so, nice, so, and we're talking so about what, an aspiration, is yes. to try and get people offline than online. So like okay, the so, opposite so, of trying to get popularity. Right. The, the <laughs> Getting op popularity the to have... videos about the, gaming, the opposite of that. 
the opposite of capturing people and then uh, capturing people and then being like, hey, go out and do this and talk about it. Because okay, sometimes so, so, maybe so some people don't have the encouragement. So the church has a budget of a uh, million dollars and they're, they're like, yes, we love your vision. You here, you got a million dollars to implement. What would I do? Yeah. Start schools. Okay. So, so what, what, what would be your involvement and how would your children be involved in starting those schools? See, now we're going into dreamland now because I actually had thought about how much I would love to have more Orthodox schools, Orthodox based schools, but even if not Orthodox schools that were based around more based around community and home economics, as opposed to, um, as opposed to just making money, like obviously making money is a good, like it, it, it's not an evil to make money. It's just more of the emphasis on like, you're getting that. And what are you going to do with that? Like, do you know what you're going to do with that? How, how much is too much? Things like that. How you can just have a more grounded life by way of learning about the fundamentals that we all have to live with. Like, you know, having a budget, learning how, like learning how, how to cook, reading comprehension and grammar, um, to be able to communicate better and things like that. Like it would be great if the focus of the education could be about human skills as opposed to just getting a job, qualifying for a job, you know? Mm -hmm. So, Those so are what, realities, but yeah. what would your role be? Would you manage the the the, the school? Would you want to educate the kids yourself? Do you want to uh, make the curriculum? Like like, what's your role? Maybe be a part of the curriculum, but like help do the fundraising, keep it sustainable, things like that. Yeah. So, so you 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 see yourself in in a structural support role there, then? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And 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 your children, like, what what do you see them doing? Participating in it. <laughs> just 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 ro rolling with the. Just rolling with, with the with punches the, until they're uh, old enough, and then hopefully they are a part of that. I don't know. I mean, like, if this is five years, that means I have a fifteen-year-old, and that means I have a twenty-year-old. Wow, twenty-year-old, uh -oh. a fifteen-year-old, and a twelve-year-old, thirteen-year-old. Mm -hmm. I mean, thirteen-year-old. So thirteen, fifteen, and twenty-year-old. So I mean, like. That's a. They're at different <laughs> junctions in their life. I don't know what they would be doing, you know. No, no, but you get to pick in in this scenario. Oh, I right? get to pick. Okay, okay, all right, all right. So, well, then that means no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. just just watch it, kids. <laughs> yeah, I think I really it would just be their participation in building it, you know. Um. Mm. because I would have hoped, I would hope that because of the places in their life, especially the younger ones, since this is a school, um, that they would know the questions that their peers have, but maybe they're too afraid to ask. Oh, they, have, um, they have ears to hear. And stuff like, well, if they ask the question, maybe the reason why they're asking it to their friends is because they're afraid to ask it to their adults around them. Cause I know that was me as well. And I think a lot of people acknowledge that, but like, I hear questions that my daughter asked me and then she says it's because like her friend had asked the question and you know, she didn't really know how to ask. And you know, because I know them, I know probably the reason why they can ask that. Um, 
And so they have insights of big questions that I think a lot of us have on different levels, um, but we don't understand them at the place of young people because we've lost that. It's like uh, it's like an aspect of of, uh, of Peter Pan, like the o- opposite, where we we turn into grown ups and then we lose. Um, all sense of understanding of what it was like to be a child and have questions. Um, yeah. Like I, I, it reminds me of this. I forgot exactly the quote that I, I had heard, but, uh, or I was told by GK Chesterton. It's, uh, maybe it's not that God has grown old, but that he remains a child and we've, outgrown him or grown up but basically that grown away <laughs> yeah like basically that we that what we describe as grown-ups having these rules regulations these curmudgeoning things maybe god is still youthful you know mm-hmm. uh is still youthful wise ultimate eternal wisdom, renewal but Con- constant dying to the moment yeah so it's just you know um so kids have insights we just need to under try to understand what it is that they're inciting (laughs) so so, yeah that well that's nice that you have that relationship right that they are able to ask you these questions right and and yeah like imparting uh this capacity to answer that questions for their peers right and maybe more important right like giving them the ears to hear the question in the first place right because mm-hmm. like that's more important than having the answer because you can yeah. find the answer mm-hmm. <laughs> um so, so yeah i think i think that that is a value that has been uh disregarded in society and and the the other thing that i i, I picked up is is right like you said that they participate in the building Mm-hmm. right and, yeah. and in in some sense that's imparting something of yourself in there mm-hmm. right but also the other way right like their imparts in you right and that well that's a different type of binding right like it's right it it's being bound mm-hmm. by shared is it fate not, not really fate but shared identity in at least right yeah um So, so, like, are there ways that you see yourself facilitating that? Like, what what are things you you'd have to do to to make these qualities occur? In my kids. Well, in yeah, changes in your own behavior so that you can do oh. it for your kids, right? That. Uh... Changes That's that the I, hard I'd question. have to. <laughs> at its basic level, consistency. Mm-hmm. That I think that's the number one thing. Being cons- consistent. Consistent doesn't mean not having better understandings or not growing. Consistency is. Consistency is that. Reliability over time. Yes, is reliability over time. It's like you could be you. You, someone could know you for thirty-five years, and they could still describe you with the same adjectives, because mm-hmm. those are the things that are enduring about you, even though you have failed or you've grown or whatever the case may be. One hundred percent. So I think I think really just that consistency. I, th- I think that you will always get, you will always get, well, it's like, it's the reap what you sow. Um, right. So how do you sow? So, uh, so. Um, you sow by way of speaking less and only speaking when it is important. So not micromanaging every single 
aspect of like a little tick or a little thing, you know, um, letting it be. Letting God work. Yeah. Letting it be. So, yeah. But so Dan, the last thing, like, are there any stats that you could be taking to making that school a reality? Any, any, anything? Wow, uh, because that's not even on my radar, so I have nothing there. Well, yeah, <laughs> I'm putting it on your radar. <laughs> You're putting it on my radar. I don't know. I haven't even thought about how you do things like that. You know, like well, that, that's the thing that you could be doing. <laughs> yes. That is an action item I could be doing. I mean, the one thing that I, I I know where I would like to just start, and it's not really just like, it's not like a school thing. It's just more of a, I would like to, because it's always, it's been on my mind. I would like to start like a, a periodical magazine quarterly for women and children, like one for women, one for children. That is more about reading and understanding and conversing than about buying um as much as i love beautiful pictures and beautiful pic uh, uh, beautiful pictures and beautiful clothes like that will still uh, that would still be there cuz i love it but as but not be a whole thing of advertising right but encouraging um, participation of all sorts of all sorts of different ways that we can be integrated women, you know, whether it be that we have to work because the, the reality is that some of us will have to work, um, but not being held down by that. Um, whether you want to be a, what we call a homesteader, like if you can think of a sort of label that's out there as trends to examine those later labels in a implicit way. So not like say, not be like, so why it's bad to be like this, right? Examining the whys of that and being like, oh, I never really understood that. Um, so is, and then is, is, is that, are you saying that there's you're trying to invite a generative way to commune as woman, women among women? Yeah. But okay. in a in a way of a publication in which it's just like, oh, I never thought about this. Let me like share this or talk about this or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um and conversations and then seeing different walks of life as opposed to just like rich elite. Ugh, those are such buzzwords, but um uh notable people, you know. Um the online space has opened up the doors for just the common woman to have a platform of some sort. And there's a lot of women that have do interesting things like the ones that have a craft and artisanship, something that they do that um, they love doing or participating in an environment that they love being in, like um, raising cattle or whatever. And um, they, you, the ones that I see online, like, you could tell, especially because like the numbers are not popular, you know, like they are just doing it because they love to do it and they want to want to show people that it's that this is a way that you can live your life. Just one way, just one way you can do this and live and live in certain values. And so connecting all of that around these topics of things that we experience, like, you know, like marriage, kids, uh, different uh, ages of kids, um, like different, um, topics. I mean, there's, there's just, there, there are some magazines that I, uh, like kind of have bookmarked that I love the format, even though not the, the content exactly, you know, or like the drive of it, but I, I love that they focus on one aspect, you know, and then also to encourage living in more of the fantasy. Uh, so having fictional short stories, you know, encouraging um, new writers to submit their narratives that, you know, revolve around a theme and like having that because um, one of the things I, I, I 
wish that we still had was this robust um, printing, uh, like printing, because, you know, obviously with each technology that has come into where it captures the visual, we have lost the, the, um, because it is still visual, but like the more book bookish things. Um, there was a time where magazines like um like penny penny magazines, magazines that you buy for a penny or like newspapers, whatever, like big or small, where you would have up and coming people writing uh their their stories, you know, the those ideas of like the starving artist that has this dream of like being able to publish their novel or something. Um, some of the biggest names in writing of the past all started with like, you know, a short story. Um, someone more modern, like Rod Serling, he, you know, we know him for Twilight Zone and his mind behind the Twilight Zone, but he actually started off like, you know, writing short stories um and doing shorts and that's that it would be wonderful to encourage the arts in that way of people it's not about trying to get fame but just kind of like getting their work out there and not having to um adhere to something like seo or popularity so that's kind of the integration of that and here i am like talking about this whole idea on this right now but that would be that would be something that i would love to do and then as far as like the kids version of it it would be more of a um the same things but more of of like i would say fairy tales and mischief you know how and and i mean like cute playful mis mischief um, I think I was telling Sally and you or someone, there's this book that I don't even know how I'd gotten, got, got a hold of it, but, um, it's called the dangerous book for boys. And really what it is, is like these different activities that you can do that, like, like how to tie a rope, things like that. And it's, and what I find fun about it is like something like how to do knots or something. If you make a strong knot, you can do a lot of things with that, that thing, you know? And that could be a quote dangerous thing to know, and it's like it makes it this, this this big elusive thing, and then there's this mischief that happens with it, and and I would love to um, have like a more directed proper mischief than trying to play silly pranks on people and recording them. You know what I mean? Like um, the imaginative part of mischief, what I call mischief. So yeah. Anyway, those mm -hmm. are the things. Because I, yeah. I, I know. So, so you, you know, you know what? Don't, don't fill in for me. So you. What, it was what more I, like I was trying. I was going to tell you something to do something. <laughs> Be mischievous. Okay. No, go to bed. <laughs> yeah, well. I'll, I'll, go to bed because I'll, I'm keeping you up from my side of the world. So what I'm hearing you say is a fact of the, or I guess I imagined this, right? So there's a, I. A, a, a magazine like that, right, creates a shared reality, mm -hmm. right? And you're you're trying to invite people to participate in that shared reality so that you can commune. Mm -hmm. You can find like, it. Because, because could... the, there's a fragmentation in the internet right now where, mm -hmm. where everybody's consuming different things and, mm -hmm. and, and so the, the cohesion is is gone and i like i i feel that you're inviting a participation that can re-establish that cohesion yeah. mm -hmm. yes okay. that we're all that in the end we all have more similarities than we do differences and that there is more one there, there there's more than one way to be what you are in this world and more than one direction that you can take with that i guess you could say there's a fullness okay. of the human. Yes. Well, that 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 is a really um, sweet message to uh, <laughs> to end up on. Um, so yeah, like is is there a, a lesson that that you drew from the conversation? Some something that you learned about yourself, or that's not so scary to be recorded and talking to a friend. Okay. <laughs> 
I, I guess I guess I succeeded in one thing. Now, yeah, I think viewers, you succeeded in many things. All the viewers get to decide whether I succeeded in other things. As oh, well. I think you did. Everybody, tell him that he succeeded. Okay. Press the like and subscribe. Okay. Press the like and subscribe and watch for more videos from Manuel. <laughs> yeah, and uh, also leave a comment with the takeaways that you have and uh, feedback for Femina because that's kind of the spirit that we were ending in, right? Like the, yeah. the communing and uh, the shared reality and uh, yeah, the the giving, well, maybe asking the question that need, she needs to ask so that yeah. she, she, she can find Get the, the next answer. step forward. Yeah. Um, well, I thank you because I thank you for being persistent because I most likely would never have knocked on your door to be like hey let me be on your channel <laughs> so thank you for being persistent <laughs> well, to get me out you. of my shell you got me to participate in something i was nervous and participating in so right and, and you, you. you did it you did a great job i i think you you provided some valuable insight for people and uh, ways to reflect on on their own experiences and uh, yeah i think i think that is actually uh, well, that's why I do it, right? So, yeah. uh, well, you do a good job with it. So, keep going. So, thanks everybody for watching. Thank you. And uh, see you next time. Yep. Bye.